Hi, I'm Kent. Recently I acquired a SCUT 231 kiln. This is a very old kiln. Um, I have done a walkthrough and tore it down at this point, and I know what I need to replace. In particular, I need to replace all the high voltage uh, electrical system. I want to swap out the kiln sitter, which uses a mechanical lever and a cone with a thermocouple and a microcontroller, so I can actually run the system digitally. So this, this is the wiring diagram I'm using for inspiration for my kiln. The high voltage power comes in, it goes to a terminal block, power then goes to each of the relays, and then out to the elements within the kiln. Since I've removed one of the rings, I only have uh, four elements, I don't have six. Likewise, I only have two relays. Each relay controls one ring, so it controls a pair of elements in the kiln. The other part of this is the thermocouple, which goes down and connects up to the control board. The control board then turns on and off the relays. So laid on the table here are the high voltage and low voltage components I want to use for my kiln. To start with is uh, power. So I've got a modern grounded plug. Uh, this is different than my own kiln. This uh, cord here is rated for uh, 50 amps, as which as I need, at 240 volts. As I said, it has a ground, so I actually can ground the case. The old one didn't have that. There's the two lines for the 240 volt system, and there's actually the, the neutral line as well. So similar to a modern scut kiln, that's gonna come into a terminal block. I picked this up. Most of these components I got off of Amazon. I can give you links. So I'll connect the two legs to the 240 volt system here. So it's got these nice covers. It's also screw down a connector, so I can actually make sure I have a really good, uh, really good connection. To go with that, I got a bunch of high temperature uh, crimp on connectors, so I can make my connection. So these here are rings I can then uh, put onto the terminal blocks. So when the power comes into the kiln, the next destination is going to be the relays. So these are the same relays that the modern scut kilns use. There's actually two different types of relays. Um, I picked this one. I can link to the data sheet. And the idea is that the power will come in, and then there's a control signal that will come and turn the relays on and off to as it requires power. The relay power then comes out, the 240 volts comes out and goes through this high temperature wire that will then be connected to the elements. And I got these ferrules here to be able to connect the wire to the elements. Power comes back through the relay and then back out. So that's the high voltage system and the relays are the interface between the high voltage and low voltage system. I found some open source software for a Raspberry Pi to run a kiln. The kiln software I think is just a PID loop and that software is already written so that's great. The Raspberry Pi needs to send out a signal to the control line of the relays and that is what tells the relays to turn on and off. These relays here, however, are, uh, I believe, 12 volt relays, which is what SCUT uses. So the Raspberry Pi can't drive those directly. Instead, I actually have this little board here that has a MOSFET on it. So what's ha gonna happen is the Raspberry Pi is gonna tell the MOSFET to turn on. The MOSFET output will then drive the relay, and then the relay will drive the 240 volt system. So the program on the Raspberry Pi can turn the elements on and off. And since SCUT uses this exact relay in their kilns, I figured it was a safe bet. The last part of the system that I'm replacing is a thermocouple. So I took out the kiln setter and I'm going to put in a thermocouple in its place, which will require us some modifications to the body of the kiln. That'll connect to a thermocouple block. And then through some thermocouple wire, we'll connect up to this board here. So this will read the thermocouple temperature and then send it off to the Raspberry Pi as well. So the way the system will work in the end is the thermocouple will be on the kiln. It'll read the temperature. Through this board, the Raspberry Pi will see, okay, it's at whatever temperature, and it will call for heat. When it calls for heat, it'll send a signal through the MOSFET to the relays, to the elements, turn on the power. When it turn it on for a while, when it's done, it'll turn it back off and cycle on and on and off until we gradually raise up to temperature. We could also do a slow cool if we wanted. We could do holds. Um, because this is digitally controlled, now we can do kind of any temperature profile we want. So that's a quick walkthrough of the components I'm gonna to use to put in my kiln. Right now, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna house all these. I'm probably going to put them into the original scut enclosures. I'm a little bit worried about temperature, but I figure we'll try it and see what happens. You can always uh, swap them out and put them in a different place if it winds up firing too hot. Before I started putting some of the electrical components on the kiln, I wanted to test them out. So here is a quick setup that I've put together with a breadboard to test out the relays. So the Raspberry Pi itself can't drive the relays directly. I'll use one of the digital lines to control a MOSFET. The MOSFET will actually turn on and off 12 volts. So here I have a PC power supply off to the edge. So it has 12 volts coming in, it has five volts coming in, and it has ground. So the MOSFET's gonna switch the 12 volts on and off for the relay. These are the control signals, which will then open and close the pair of contacts. So right now these contacts are open.
And likewise, this pair of contacts is open. When there's 12 volts across this pair of pins here, it should cl close and connect these. It'll close the switch between these. Inside there is an electromagnet that gets turned on by the 12 volts coming in. So let's try this out. So right now the MOSFET driver has a pull down resistor in it. So when the signal line is not connected, the 12 volts is not flowing through. So if we take the signal pin and tie it to five volts high, this is the same as turning a digital IO pin on, on say the Raspberry Pi, the relay clicks, and there's a little LED that turns on. So now if I measure the resistance across these pairs of terminals, see it's 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So basically these are closed. The switch is now on and the 240 volts can flow out to the elements. When the kiln reads the right temperature, once the turn the relays off, it will take that five volt signal and ground it. And again, there's a pull down resistor in here, so it does that automatically. You heard the click of the relay. And again, now there is infinite resistance between these. So the switch is open. So that's a quick overview of how the relay works. In my kiln, I'll have a pair of relays I will probably drive those by the same signals to start with. So basically both relays will turn on and off at the same time. The reason there's two relays is that finding a relay to turn all of the kiln power on and off is actually really difficult. By having two relays, I only need to drive half of the current for the kiln. Each section has two elements. So the one relay is only required to drive two elements as opposed to one relay driving all four elements. This also allows finer control of the elements. If I wanted to, I could turn the elements on separately. So I mentioned previously, the original scut kiln, the 1018, would have a bottom element that has a higher resistance, so it actually would get hotter. I didn't change that out for my kiln, but if I wanted to, I actually could drive the bottom ring separately from the top ring to overcome that a little bit. So in the next video, I'm actually gonna start installing some of these components so if we can just start getting the kiln to work. Thanks for following along on my kiln rebuild journey. I hope you've enjoyed watching me go through this process. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks.